We're back here at Song of the Day, here in the Rock Cave. It is Tuesday, April 7th, and we're going back to 1978. But before I get started, let's just say this topic might be too soon for me so early in this experiment of video. Because I got some stuff to say about this band, and I haven't practiced being on video, so we'll see what happens. We're just going to go with it. But anyway... April 7th, 1978, this band releases their first single, it's The Police, and they release Roxanne. They released this single, they had only been formed the year before in 77, and they put it out and the BBC did not pick it up, they did not play it, they were not interested. The band was so frustrated that they actually started trying to do advertisements that said that the BBC had banned it due to its content about being about a prostitute, which was not true. But they were trying to, well, the song is about a prostitute, but the BBC didn't ban it because of that. And uh, that was their way of trying to get some traction, but it didn't materialize. It was released in the United States in 79, and it was a top 40 hit in 79 in America. So they re-released it in the UK in 79, and it went up to number 12. So it was a decent hit for them. Interesting fact about the police, if you think about it, uh, they are this mega group, right? They're just huge. Everyone knows who the police is, and they think just how awesome they are. But when you actually look at their body of work, they were formed in 77. Their first album was 78. They put out, do you, do you guys know how many albums they put out? Do you know? Do you know? They put out five albums in six years, and that's it. And then they were done. I mean, they were, that was all they had. So let's go Let's go through that. Uh, 78, Outlandos de More. 79, Regatta de Blanc. 80, Zenyatta Mandata. Probably my favorite album other than Synchronicity. 81, Ghost in the Machine. And 83, of course, Synchronicity. And that's all their albums. They put out an album a year, basically, and those albums run on average of about 40 minutes. So it's pretty amazing that they're considered one of these huge bands, and it was really just this finite amount of time that they put out music. And if you actually consider that they didn't pick up any traction until, uh, in my life, it wasn't until Ghost of the Machine in, in 81 that I even had started listening to them. So it's pretty amazing as far as that's concerned. So, again, as I mentioned, my favorite album by them, Zenyatta Mandata, if we don't talk about synchronicity, which is a totally different animal. Uh, you look at that album, it's got Don't Stand So Close to Me, Driven to Tears, When the World is Running Down, Canary in a Coal Mine, and Da Do 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 Da 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 Da. Clearly, that's an epic album, and that was pretty much. Uh, cemented it for me as far as bands are concerned because I had Ghost in the Machine and kind of turned me on a little bit to them but but really when I went back and listened to that one that was just great for me. So then fast forward 83 they put out Synchronicity and what else happens in that year? Well MTV picks them up and MTV pretty much made them total complete rock stars uh in all those videos and concerts and i remember i think one of the first concerts i saw on mtv was the police um and they just really just went through the stratosphere that is a great album there aren't any bad, bad songs on that album um i even love two of the songs on there that maybe you're not familiar with mother and miss grandanko those are great songs a uh, little fact about the album itself, I was still buying records at that time, and so when I bought the record, there was a song on there that was not on the album, that was on the cassette, and that was Murder by Numbers. So I did not know about the song Murder by Numbers for a while, because it wasn't until someone else played a cassette that I was like, what? What's this? And that's a great song as far as I'm concerned. Um, so The Police, great band. What do I have to say as far as The Police is concerned, for those of you that know me? Well, they break up in 84, and after that, Sting goes solo. And, well, let's just say Sting should have gone back to his original name, Gordon Sumner. It would have been better if he just put out his solo albums under Gordon Sumner, Fields of Gold. That would have made more sense. I mean, Sting? Sting? Sting and that stuff? makes no sense he's not the king of pain at that point he put on all that stuff he did all that and it was just i don't know it might as well have been um someone like harry connick jr or something 
it didn't do anything for me. So after that, Sting was dead to me because he just wasn't that interesting anymore. Most of those albums were pretty feckless to me. And did I say feckless? Feckless is a great word, and it'll come back when we talk about Pink Floyd, but we'll get to that later. So anyway, what's my song of the day? You'd think it would be Roxanne, because that's what came out today, but it's not, because Roxanne, as I said, I, a great song, but not in my top 10, maybe in my top 20 police songs. I might go with Synchronicity 2, love that song. I might even go by uh, Walking on the Moon, which is one of my favorite police songs, but I'm going to go with... My favorite police song, likely one that you've never even heard before, and it's The Bed's Too Big Without You, which just shows they were really just a reggae band. And later on tonight, open up a bottle of wine and give it a listen. Maybe we'll open up this bottle of wine. Get it closer. All right. Anyway, that's your song of the day. We'll see you back on the flip side. Have a good one. <laughs>